it's happening. It is actually the uh, afternoon this time, so I'm not going to say good morning, but I do feel like I, I have to do my trademark one of these. Mmm, it's Friday afternoon, so now it is wine time. Um, I am just sitting out here taking in the view at the moment, kind of having a nice little relaxing time and uh, going through field data info. So I've had some questions from a couple of people and they've been waiting for me to put together a video about uh, results and trials and I promised them that I would. And so I'm going to talk through these and then I'll show clips of these uh, the actual data so so you can see it and then um, if anybody wants to kind of look at these and uh, you know I can email them out or whatever else but just in front of me right here uh, this is from 2016 um, at the University of Georgia Athens Turfgrass Research Center I'll put a screenshot of this up uh, this one here that we're looking at is establishment of Bermuda grass now I'm gonna kind of walk you through this. I'm gonna set this down here. Eh, hell, I can hold it, sorry. So what we did in 2016 is we ran um, uh, two BioGreen products. Uh, these, are, these are not Green County Fur products, so I'll go into that in a, in a second. So it was a 20 plus, um, which is a um, equivalent to the 1801. And, um, and then on a couple of the other ones, uh, we did the 20 plus with a combination of the 1001, so it's like 901 that you guys might be familiar with on the Green County side. So there are different um, names and slightly different analysis between uh, the two, um, and I could get into that at another time as to why we did that, but this is, this is just what it is. So um, uh, Professor uh, Henry chose what he found to be the best um, I guess most robust or equivalent product that he could um, to what we were doing and then applied at sort of the standard rates uh, with that product and that was uh, was an Anderson's product and this is not about us versus Anderson's or anything like that so I, I want everybody to be clear about this um, this isn't a product based um, a comparison it's more of a um, getting to a result in a different way. So using a conventional method or, or more conventional method versus kind of how we do things. So um, on this particular one that I'll put up from 2016, this was growing in um, Bermuda grass and there's uh, for like sports field, sports turf. And what I, what I wanna make the point on this, when I show this on the screen and I'm gonna show a screenshot of the summary um, of what he came up with and then um, I, I don't think anybody needs to see these piles and piles of numbers I'm actually gonna paint around and show you that right now. Here's why so these are percentage of cover on the dates that things were taken color readings um, they, It just kind of goes on and on and and then there's sort of a summary of the description of what happened so I will screenshot this and show you kind of how everything came about now the, the important thing about this is uh, by the end of the study, we had 98% grow in compared to 93% uh, on a conventional type program uh, compared to, uh, let's see, I want to say it's 76% on a check plot where that's just the grass doing its own thing. So uh, there's, there's things to point out about this. This particular um, program that we built, we did at a five gallon per acre rate, 15 ounces of 20 plus, okay? and did that a total of six times. So that was a quarter pound of in each time compared to a half a pound of in. So we were actually able to get a greater density, higher grow in with half the amount of nitrogen, no phosphorus whatsoever, um, and get a net better result. So that's, that's one test, okay, that was on here. And, it, and it, it's pretty cool to kind of see, um, and so, you guys who've been asking me for, for this type of data from universities and why things work, then yeah, you're gonna get to see it right now. So I'm going to now skip to another one. We also ran at the same year uh, one on St. Augustine grass uh, standard and uh, ran on centipede as well. So I, I'm gonna put both of those up and you can look at the same type of thing. Um, on the um, St. Augustine, um, we ran a program that was almost 
identical to that other, uh, to the grow in. Uh, on this one, I'm gonna just flip this around and show you. This would be on Palmetto, St. Augustine, uh, how it was mowed, uh, the plot sizes, how it was applied. Again, here's uh, 14280 Anderson's product that was put out. That has, you know, humic and micronutrients and everything. It's a great, great product. Um, and we ran that with uh, our 20 plus and then our 1001. And so still six applications, time that it was done. Uh, all of the data as far as wind, gallons per acre, uh, the heights of the booms that were put out, temperatures during the time, what it looked like, clear, scattered clouds, clear, clear, partly cloudy. And then the dates of all the readings as that went across through the months, as you can see. Reading uh, turf quality, chlorophyll, everything, okay? So this same type of thing. And again, we come down to a summary that basically says the same thing, okay? That biogreen treatments often exceeded Anderson's fertility. Again, this is not about Anderson's, so I wanna make sure that everybody understands that this is not a, a thing about their product. This is the closest thing that they could get to what we had um, and, and kind of how that is. So I, I'll show that. I'm gonna give you that data, little screenshot, so you can look at that. Uh, while I'm talking over this as well. Okay, so that was 2016. In 2017, we ran uh, the a different trial. I, I wanted to run a program versus what would be considered conventional. And um, so we did that, and we did that with combinations of the in-charge. Hey, there's my sons coming to visit. Let's, let's say hi. Can you a little snack? Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. What do you know about grass? Yeah. What else? Whale. Uh huh. And sun. Yes. To grow. That's right. Does it need anything special? To fat. Water. It does need water. Water and soil and sun, right? Are those the important pieces? Yes. What do you need to grow? Pumpkins. <laughs> Perfect. Here you go. I'll see you later. Isaac Keone, ladies and gentlemen, he's a genius. He also has a, a YouTube channel that we put up as fun called uh, um, Interviews with Isaac. If you guys want to get a kick out of that, you should check it out. It's pretty funny. Uh, now I'm going to jump back in here. Sorry for that brief interruption. That's real life. Uh, here, 2017. Now in this, we ran our program uh, in charge, RGS, the iron, microgreen, humic 12, and we put those out in, in certain applications. And in this one, I believe, um, by the time it was all said and done, so we put in a half pound of in out here in the first and last applications. So that was that 22 ounces of in charge. Then we dropped it down, okay? So we had a few applications in here, application B, D, and E, where we lowered that rate, okay? So it was in the third pound range. And then we were throwing RGS in the first, last, so first, second, and last. And then, so, you know, you can just kind of see iron in the middle, microgreen, humic, just how we would do it for, uh, you know, you guys running some of these biostimulant packs and stuff. That, that's what this is. And it's just using our nitrogen, again, and this is in comparison uh, with this same 1428 uh, and ran the same deal. So again, same type of thing. There's color ratings, growth, uh, density. It just runs and runs and runs and runs, and this is just, what it is okay so uh same type of summary you know we we still continue to have higher readings as it goes uh the exciting thing about these is is this year uh when we are done with the trials that we're running this year so it'll be a third year out there we're actually going to pull carbon results uh root results uh, soil tests the whole thing so so there's a bunch coming out of that now if i go way back um, we have years from 2009 to, I want to say 2012, we were doing agricultural stuff with um, establishing soybeans, corn, uh, things like that. And I have all of that data as well. If anybody would like to, you know, email me answers at Loncology, I can send you all that. It's, it's very cool stuff. Uh, I'm pretty much most people know about the Auburn trials. Uh, which we ran for three years. That started in 2009, and we did that with a variety of things. That was basically for the golf business um, and just kind of showing what we could do with such a low rate of in. And uh, there's these color charts that are kind of cool um, that when you pull it up and, and kind of see a, a floating chart that we were running 
So they did a couple of different tests. They ran our 501 product at a standard rate of in, and obviously everything was off the charts. It was it was pretty wild. Um, and then they ran it at our recommend, which was just running at like a gallon an acre a, a week on a golf green. And when you looked at that compared to the other products, um, what it was beating out on literally less than one tenth of the amount of in, uh, it was pretty phenomenal. Now, that rate could go up. That was like bare minimum, seeing what we could get away with. But we did this one for three years, and um, the, the results on it were were very cool and, and very, very interesting. But I'm gonna flip this around and show you just a relative color um, index here at different rates. So what I want you to see here is is in this section, and hopefully you're able to, I don't know, this will, this will work so that you can see it. Urea at a half pound, ammonium sulfate, uh, malorganite, uh, Scott's Turf Builder, urea at 0 0.034, and biogreen at 0 0.034. And then I want you to just look at these color ratings on when it was done, because this is kind of how they rated it out. Look at our point, point zero three four pounds compared to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It just starts out strong, and then it kind of hits into this sort of okay category at next to nothing going out. But if you jump up and you compare that to some of these other lines here where there's like malorganite going out, our color ratings on that beat it in most cases at a half pound of in. Now, ammonium sulfate and urea, those are gonna give a quick spike and that's just kind of how it is. Um, but we were running less than one-tenth the amount of in, less than a tenth. And what's really important about that is we're showing that the plant color vigor uh, growth is not tied to the nitrogen. See, our nutrients are being foliarly absorbed. We're, we're getting this great absorption right off the bat which is giving the plant, you know, its color and its initial responses. Because everything that you see on here when you go through these is that you'll see the initial response when people apply is this, this you know, robust color. And then it starts to maintain and it hits this sort of equilibrium as time goes on. And that's because we're literally giving the soil what it needs to thrive, that the, the plant can take up the nutrients that it needs to grow, give it color, and then everything else that we're putting in there is nurturing the overall soil health, which is ultimately supporting that plant. And, and that's where a lot of things miss with a lot of products on the market is it's, they're still kind of thinking like we have to shove this plant food down and, and just ignore what the soil needs to thrive. The soil is giving it the life. The soil is giving it the life. The plant food will give it, you know, maybe some greater color or boost certain aspects of that plant, but it doesn't have to be delivered in a granular form. That is not the way that it has to work. So, you know, when you start reading um, Kinsey or, or any of these other agronomists and start talking about foliar, they'll show charts and, and data about how much more effective that uptake is rather than putting out granular. And then if you think about that and say, okay, we're gonna give the nutrients through, through the tissue and then support everything underneath, that is the whole model behind everything that I have ever done and wanted to create, is the liquids themselves contain a multifaceted approach to soil and plant care. There are soluble and readily available nutrients that go into that plant tissue and make it grow. Then there are all of these other goodies that go down and support the soil structure and so the plants are creating and they're growing more robust and, and anytime you mow and you cut those clippings and things go back into the ground and it starts to recycle, you build further soil health. So that's basically what today was about. I just wanted to share some of the data, some of the stuff that we're, we're doing. Um, there, there are more trials. I, you know, I wanted to have three years worth of info before we started putting this out, but there's a few people who are just constantly, you know, on me about you know show us the data well here's the data okay um and the bottom line is put it out and it works just put it out and it works and uh, you see gains over gains over gains so anyway that's all i got for this week i hope everybody's doing awesome and enjoying the fall uh, our colors are are coming in out here it's starting to look just absolutely stunning and um 
I'll see everybody again real soon. Take care.